Hi everyone, my name is Sarah ben -Mamar. I am the Associate Director for Research Services at Well Cornell Medicine at the Samuel J. Wood Library. And through this video, I would like to introduce you to our research data management ecosystem that we use um, to build up a response to um, the federal, latest federal data management ensuring policy uh, in our academic institution. All our services related to data management are really mapped onto the research data life cycle that is presented you here, uh, presented to you here on the right. The research data life cycle starts with the planning and design of an experiment. It is then followed by the collection and the capture of some data. This data needs then to be analyzed with or without collaborators. And then come the time to think about how to, um, what to do with these data sets, how to manage them, um, store them and preserve them or discard them for part of it. Um, and then comes the time to think about sharing and publishing the results and the findings based um, that are coming out of those data sets. And finally, the research life cycle ends up with the discovery, reuse, and citation of those data set. Through this video, I would like to introduce you to four um, services and tools that we have um, uh, uh, available for researchers at our institution to help them uh, comply with this latest regulation um, coming up from the funding agencies. So that includes our data core, um, which is our computational secure enclave for uh, sensitive data sets. I also talk briefly about our Centric Software Hub. Our latest tool is our data retention tool that we implemented to um, help researchers comply with um, um, the data management part of the NIH policy rec who, that recently came out. And finally, I'll also introduce you to our data catalog that uh, we hope will facilitate uh, the discovery, reuse, and data set produced um, at our institution. Throughout this whole presentation, you'll see three objectives displayed at the bottom. Um, and um, when those objectives are displayed in green, that means that the specific tools that I'm talking about are um, aiming at uh, fulfilling those three objectives that uh, we have um, at our institution. Our first objective was obviously to build a data management program um, and have faculty um, um, do adopt better management data management practices. The second objective is to engage our stakeholders and also foster the application of the FAIR principles, FAIR standing for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data. Our third objective is also to offer some storage solutions to our researchers, again, to help them uh, comply with um, the latest regulations for data management and sharing. This slide is, provi is providing you an overview of all our services. Um, that falls under the category of data management. Um, our very first service was actually Data Core, depicted here. Data Core was is still our secure um, computational enclave. It is made specifically for um, researchers who are analyzing and needs a space to host sensitive data sets. So it is completely HIPAA compliant, and we have also a CMS certification for this environment. So we can host. Um, 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 different kind of restricted or sensitive data sets. Um, the librarians within this context acts as um, the ask the act sorry as a curation team. So they really act as intermediary between the external data provider and the researchers. We are um, as librarians handling the um, the data for the researchers. Um, we also um, organize. Um, the access to this data in um, compliance with the IRB protocols or the data use agreement uh, that researchers are providing us. So we make sure that only the users who can access the data are actually accessing the data. Um, next to our data core, the, the, the other application that is actually intrinsically linked to data core is our data catalog. So our data catalog is um, a place where researchers can advertise the existence of a data set um, with the idea of fostering its reuse whenever possible and applicable. Um, the particular of our data catalog is it has a um, um, associated data use agreement for each data set so people can understand what are the restrictions 
related to the use uh, or reuse of specific data sets. And our latest, um, I would say, tool and uh, service um, is related to our long-term data repository de depicted here. This long-term data repository is both um, supporting the data core at the end of a project. Uh, when a project closes, um, researchers are invited to archive their data in this long-term data repository. And this long-term data repository is also um, filling, feeding the data catalog application whenever um, applicable. So, and this is also um, this repository that is supporting our latest tool that we call the data retention tool that we build up to allow researchers to um, archive their data set um, easily and um, at least partially comply with the latest um, federal regulation regarding data management and sharing. Uh, the library is also um, working, um, doing some work for our research integrity office. We do some work relating, related to data integrity. Um, and we also um, are in charge of provisioning scientific software um, to all the campus, including um, our campus in um, Ithaca, as well as our Carter uh, campus. So this is how our, uh, generally how our data management uh, program looks like. Now, just a little bit, a little bit more, uh, more insights into our data core um, data core enclave. Um, so as I mentioned, the data core is our computational secure enclave. It is administered by librarians. Librarians act as data management specialists. They curate, import, and export data, ensuring that, and also ensuring that the data that is exported is all the identified for researchers. Um, and um, librarians also ensure that um, any access to data set is compliant with the data use agreement and that all the data use agreement or RUB protocols are up to date um, in uh, that the computational environment that hosts the data is um, reflecting this, um, the RUB protocol and or the data use agreement. So it is allowing um, also researchers out outside of the institution to perform some analysis. You have here like few some numbers um, of, um, that gives you an idea of the number of PIs users that are currently using the data core and the number of projects. It is um, the data core is the only institutional, uh, institutionally um, uh, vetted um, um, service to host sensitive data sets for the Cornell um, University. And this is why, while Cornell Medicine IRB and uh, our partner at New York Presbyterian Hospital prefer data core to host any data that contains um, patient health information. And all of this data core is obviously connected to um, our scientific software hub, our data catalog, and our data retention tool, which I will detail a little bit further later. So as I mentioned, the data core is really um, um, a place, like a place where uh, people can host and analyze their data, their sensitive data set. And um, what librarians um, are doing in this whole context is really to play as an intermediary with the data provider and the research team, and also the data, pro the external data provider and the PI. So as I mentioned, we ensure that um, all um, access to the data set is. Um, in agreement with um, any protocols or data use agreement um, that the PI has provisioned us. We also help um, troubleshooting some issues related to login or software or, or data with the research team. Um, the PI is of course um, um, always um, overseeing um, the, the access that is given to uh, the users um, in, in the specific projects. So they are the one confirming if someone has to have access or not to the data. And they also make sure that um, the data governance is up to date and um, um, in, in compliance with the data provider uh, requirements. Um, actually, the data core is um, also a space where external um, collaborators work. And um, this example, this example of um, this study shows um, is an example actually of um, external collaboration um, that happened within DataCore, the New York Insight Clinical Research Network COVID study. 
gathered uh, multiple institutions uh, located in New York City and um, who um, use Data Core to collaborate and, and um, gather all COVID uh, data during the pandemic. Now, the Data Core, of course, um, as I mentioned, is allowing uh, researchers to analyze their data, but researchers need scientific software to realize, to uh, perform their, um, their analysis. And so the, the scientific software hub has been created with the spirit of um, saving money for um, our researchers by uh, basically accumulating and ag aggregating all the license requests for specific softwares. And um, that would give us, that gave us actually a more leverage to negotiate with vendors. And um, we are now provisioning um, about 40 different softwares to our, um, to both our campuses in Ithaca and, um, and uh, NYC campus. And our most popular titles include BioRender, GraphPad, Flojo, um, Ingenuity Pathway Analysis. So far, we have about 110 requests per month and it keeps um, increasing um, as we provision more and more softwares, licensed softwares. Finally, our data catalog is also um, a supplement to Data Core uh, because it is um, a place where, uh, as I mentioned, researchers can advertise their existence of their data set. As of now, we have 62 active data set. This data catalog can be accessed through our community central authentication. Um, and the particular particularity is that it includes data governance document associated to each data set. And there are some, um, some tools also available to search for a specific data set based on keywords or period um, covered by the data set. Um, here you have an example of an entry of a data catalog uh, of the, sorry, an example of a data catalog entry. You can see that for each of those um, entry, there is a small paragraph that details the data set purpose and content. There is the period that is covered by the data set. Also the source of the data set, if you click on this, um, the, um, sorry, on this uh, title here, blue title is a clickable link. You can also have access to a contact, uh, to the contact information of the person uh, in, this, in the institution that can provide more information on the data set and also see any data governance or restriction document um, associated to this data set. So all of these existing tools led us to um, create this data retention program in an incremental way. So the way uh, this is the latest um, tool that was added to this ecosystem and um, the way it was designed was to as much as possible use a generalizable design and to align this new tool with the existing design. Um, the idea is to provide something that is completely independent of any technical environment. So whatever if whatever um, operating system, for example, the user is using or browser or anything like this, um, the experience should be the same. So this brings me to our data retention tool, our latest um, um, uh, application um, that we really built to help researchers comply with uh, the NH and the Co new Cornell University data retention policy. This new Cornell University data retention policy um, requires that any researcher or any researchers at Well Cornell Medicine um, archive their data set every time they publish a paper or every time their grant is closing or when they are about to leave the institution. In all those three cases, the researcher is expected to do a retention request to this tool. Um, and those three cases that I mentioned are called milestone, um, uh, but that's the idea here. So when the researcher make a retention request, they are prompted to create a project and associate um, the data set that they need to archive to this project. And during the process, they have the possibility to um, create a data catalog entry to make the data more visible and shareable if um, they wish. So there is a direct connection between our data retention tool and our data catalog. So just to end up this um, presentation, we obviously faced many challenges during the, pro during the setup of all this ecosystem. 
uh, because the um, latest uh, federal regulation are a moving target. Uh, so it is hard sometimes to keep up um, with the latest change. The training needs to be also updated accordingly, and it is hard also to keep the stakeholders engaged uh, when so so many changes happen uh, in short amount of time. And obviously, it has a cost to build up all this um, ecosystem. The successes we had was that um, we only managed to create this ecosystem because we had a close collaboration between librarians and our inter information and technology services. We have very highly motivated staff and um, the leadership, our leadership was uh, very supportive, uh, both for, from the library side and uh, uh, inter information technology service side. And we got a lot of help from our researchers. So with this, I will um, thank you uh, for watching this video and please do not hesitate to reach out to us if you have any question. Thank you.